Hey guys, so in our last video, we found the angular velocity of this grinding wheel in radians per second, and I actually made a mistake. I set a grinding wheel of 3.5 meters. So I don't know if that can fit in there, but that's actually supposed to be diameter oh goodness I'll just put D of D 0 0.35 meters that's actually supposed to be diameter so this 0 0.35 is in the actual diameter the diameter would then just be 0 0.175 meters. Now, to find the velocity or the linear speed of a point on the edge of the wheel, we need to know the relationship between the linear speed of this point on the edge of the wheel and the angular velocity. Now, when we're dealing with rotational motion, the assumptions that we're going to make is that this is a rigid body. It is a uniform rigid body. Meaning, and the consequence of this is that all points on this rigid body move with the same angular velocity. All points. And because of this, we have a relationship now between each point on the rigid body. And the beautiful thing about this is that the linear speed is equal to the radius multiplied by the angular velocity. The linear speed of a point on this rigid body is related to its angular velocity by the distance of that point from the center or from the point of rotation or the pivot or the origin. So this relationship holds. It says that the linear speed is equal to the radius multiplied by the angular velocity. Now using these, we know our radius is 1. 0.175 and we know our angular velocity is 230.84 so our linear speed just works out to be 40.31 meters per second so again this is just an elementary problem as we continue on with our problems in rotational motion we'll go into more I guess we'll start to see the kinematics at work we'll start dealing with rotating points where you have uniform angular acceleration and we're going to deal with the point where the velocity is constantly changing or it's increasing uniformly and if I said uniform acceleration I mean constant acceleration is what we're really going to be looking at so we're going to have a whole host of kinematics formulas but adjust it for rotational motion. And if you remember what the kinematics formulas look like from your translational motion, it's going to be a, a literal change of variable, but I'll show you in my next video.